I first learned about Calvary Chapel when I was in my very early 20s. I was hanging out at a friend's house and he had a couple friends that I wasn't too familiar with over there. And one of the girls there said she was heading out to Calvary Chapel. It was a Wednesday night and I asked her about it. You know, I didn't even hear of Wednesday night church before. And she said, yeah, we play a little volleyball and then we sit down on the volleyball court and some guy will come out and play guitar and we sing. And the more she said, the more odd it sounded to me. And, and then we do a Bible study. And, and I was not in tune with anybody in my life that had that type of situation happen on a Wednesday night. So I went out of sheer curiosity. I remember thinking from the worship leader, about the worship leader, that there had to be something wrong with him. How could any man just think it's cool to be up there with a the guitar singing Jesus songs on a Wednesday night after a volleyball game? And his boldness struck me and so forth. And the fact that this girl would actually invite me there and, and be unashamed about it struck me. And I forgot about Calvary Chapel probably for another five years and then um, had another invitation to come to Calvary Chapel. I took that, I thought it was great and I was much more spiritually in tune and I got fed uh, spiritually in a wonderful way. And uh, I was a part of another church at the time so I kind of had my feet in both ministries. and. And then I realized I was really learning more at Calvary Chapel than anywhere else, so I just kind of made it my full-time home. I uh, applied to work at Calvary Chapel in 2002 as the Dean of Students of the school, and I served in that capacity for six years. And as my role at Dean of Students started leaning more towards ministering to students and families than disciplining them, uh, I got the opportunity to go into the classroom, be a Bible teacher, and in that position, I've really been in a great spot to minister to kids and families and not have to worry about the discipline end, just more the ministry end. And through that, um, I realized that I was growing where I was planted and I needed to be in the classroom and just open Bible, audience of students, and trying to bring those who didn't want to be there to wanting to be there and those that were glad they were there to really grow in them into disciples. Calvary Chapel Fort Lauderdale emphasizes making disciples and everything that we do we try to identify how will this make disciples. We know Christ's commission to the believer was to go and make disciples of, of all the world. So as this is our spot on the world, this is our little piece of property on the world, we're trying to make this the best disciple making uh, piece of property we, we possibly can. So we keep our vision very clear in front of us so that whatever opportunities arise we try to fit it into that vision and that helps us to be clear on what's a yes and what's a no what we should be doing what we shouldn't be doing and then when it's a yes how to do the thing that we said to do so uh, even our school uh, is all about making disciples we put Christ preeminent in the classroom whether it be English or history or, or math or whatever it is we show that the God of all creation is relevant and evident in all of these subjects and that's part of our disciple making process. We do a lot of training to evangelize. We do a lot of missions trips. We are constantly sending people out, but we just don't send people out. We train them first. I just got out of a Mexico missions trip um, training uh, session. We're bringing our 11th graders in Mexico and we just showed them how to evangelize both through lifestyle, it's just simply living faithfully to the word, and also uh, how to just tell your story, just how what Jesus has done for you, so that way you don't have to worry about the questions they ask or how much knowledge you have. Nobody can argue with the testimony of a changed life. So we uh, just get them very comfortable expressing what God has done in their life. And as that becomes very attractive to other people, that becomes their evangelism. We have a pulpit ministry where of course we have a pastor with an open Bible giving the Word of God out and that naturally uh, frees God up to move His Spirit through our sanctuary and as there's a call for them to respond to what the Lord has done with them to come forward and, and pray for salvation realizing some of those might not be authentic but the ones that are uh, we plan a discipleship process with them from that point forward we have things like Christianity 101 courses, completely free, uh, just show up as you are to these classes. And what we try to do is really instruct them on the basics of the Christian faith. This is what Christianity is about, with the full belief and intention, but the more they know, the more attractive it gets, and the more they realize how relevant it is for their lives, and what a better choice Christianity is than anything the world has to offer. 
So we, we, we try to get them a Bible in their hand right away, uh, a Bible study guide, and then we let them know about our uh, nearly 100 ministries that are, exist at the church, uh, believing that whatever situation in life they're in, there's something for them. Whether they've been divorced recently, we have divorce care, whether they struggle with cancer, we have cancer care, whether it's just learning about the faith, we have free classes for that. No matter what uh, somebody might be going through, uh, we believe that Christ is building a body here to minister to that person. So we just try to increase awareness of that so that they can be discipled through. We're a church that wants to walk alongside the body. To get involved at Calvary Chapel Fort Lauderdale, it just starts with showing up. Just show up, express your desire, your gifts, your talents, what the Lord's put on your heart to help, and chances are we have something that fits perfectly with uh, what the Lord's doing with you, and uh, many people end up finding careers out of it. Many people end up coming to work full-time in, in that area because it's something clearly the providence of God has brought them to, and uh, it's what they want to be doing. And even if it's not a career, then in the sense that's even more wonderful because it's, it's your free time that, that's being used. But literally all that has to happen is show up and yell on the top of your lungs, hey, I want to serve, and you'll see somebody come alongside and give you numerous opportunities to serve. Why do I do what I do? I do what I do because I realize that the most fulfilled I feel on any day of my entire life is a day where uh, I'm being used by God to get His Word out to somebody else. And what I realize is the results of that are bigger than any results that I could ever create. So I love the dynamic of just simply opening the Bible, teaching it, and as I teach it, you just see visibly lives becoming so attracted to God, so uh, transformed before your eyes sometimes, and you just see literally the, the drug addicts say, I'm free, and you say, how did that happen? And their answer every time is Jesus. You see the people that say, I want to get divorced, and now they're happily married, leading marriage class, and you say, how did that happen? The answer again is always Jesus. So I love being a part of something that is bigger than I am, and that I couldn't possibly muster up the, the power to get the results that, that are getting. So you know that you're part of a divine plan, and I don't know of anything that could possibly be more rewarding than that. I would challenge anybody that is watching or listening right now that your ultimate purpose for life is going to be found when God is at the center of your life. When you put God at the center of your life, you'll find that even menial tasks or jobs, you'll, you'll see that those are opportunities for eternal benefit and you just can't beat that. The, to me, this is the cure for uh, people that just want to drink their day away or do drugs to leave their sobriety or whatever the case may be. I have found through the hundreds and hundreds of people that I've been around here for my own life that ultimate meaning and purpose is fulfilled in Christ. No other name, no other religion, no other faith. This is the one. Explore Jesus, examine Jesus, pursue Jesus, and have a story to tell, have a testimony.